Good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to our evening prayer for Saturday, Saturday, the 14th of October. Um, let's begin. Preparation. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And so that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Psalm 104, 104, 104. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. It reads, Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, how excellent is your greatness. You are clothed with majesty and honor, wrapped in light as in a garment. You spread out the heavens like a curtain and lay the beams of your dwelling place in the waters above. You make the clouds your chariot and ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers and flames of fire your servants. You laid the foundations of the earth and it never should move at any time. You covered it with the deep the deep like a garment, the waters stood high above the hills. At your rebuke they fled, at the voice of your thunder they hastened away. They rose up to the hills and flowed down to the valleys beneath, to the place which you had appointed for them. You have set them their bounds, that they should not pass nor turn again to cover the earth. You send the springs into the brooks, which run among the hills. They, gave, they give drink to every beast of the field, and the wild asses quench their thirst. Beside them the birds of the air make their nests, and sing among the branches. You water the hills from your dwelling on high, the earth is filled with the fruit of your works. You make grass to grow for the cattle and plants to meet our needs, bringing forth food from the earth and wine to gladden our hearts, oil to give us a cheerful countenance and bread to strengthen our hearts. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon, which he planted, in which the birds build their nests, while the fir trees are the dwelling for the stork. The mountains are a refuge for the wild goats and the stony cliffs for the conies. You appointed the moon to mark the seasons and the sun knows the time for its setting. You make darkness that it might be night, in which all the beasts of the forest creep forth. The lions roar for their prey and seek their food from God. 
the sun rises and they are gone to lay themselves down in their dens. People go forth to their work and to their labor until the evening. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea spread far and wide, and there move creatures beyond a number, both small and great. They go, there go the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made to play in the deep. All of these look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good. When you hide your face, they are troubled. When you take away their breath, they die and return. Again to the dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks on the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountain and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will make music to my God while I have my being. So shall my song please him while I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed out of the earth and the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. Creator God, send your Holy Spirit to renew this living world, that the whole creation in its groaning and striving may know your loving purpose and come to reflect your glory. In Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen beautiful psalm so we could do a long commentary but we'll just have a short one from Tim Keller the splendor of light it says Psalm 104 is a meditation on the wonders of creation and the wonderful creator behind it Unlike in Eastern mysticism, we see here a God who is personal and distinct from his creation, yet who is not in any way remote from it. The imagery of garment, palace, and chariot conveys that nature is filled with God's energy and presence. Hence the awe and respect that are due the natural world. And as our dazzled eyes cannot take in the brilliance of light, so we must bow before and praise the God is who is more powerful and glorious than our imaginations can comprehend. All praise we will render, O oh, help us to see. Tis only the splendor of light hideth thee. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, I often find both your words and your ways hard to fathom. Our self-justifying hearts instinctively tends to put the blame on you. Oh, help us to see that our real problem is the weakness of our spiritual eyes, which cannot take in your great light. Strengthen our spiritual sight so we can take more in. Amen. Beautiful. Our first Bible reading is taken from 2 Kings chapter 17, reading verse 1 to verse 23. In the twelfth year of King Ahaz of Judah, Hoshea, son of Elah, began to reign in Samaria over Israel. He reigned for nine years. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, yet not like the kings of Israel who were before him. 
King Shalmaneser of Assyria came up against him. Hoshea became his vassal and paid him tribute. But the king of Assyria found treachery in Hoshea, for he had sent messengers to King Saul of Egypt and offered no tribute to the king of Assyria, as he had done year by year. Therefore the king of Assyria confined him and imprisoned him. Then the king of Assyria invaded all the land and came to Samaria. For three years he besieged it. In the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria captured Samaria. He carried the Israelites away to Assyria. He placed them in Hela on the Habor, the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes. This occurred because the people of Israel had sinned against the Lord, their God, who had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. They had worshipped other gods and walked in the customs of the nations whom the Lord drove out before the people of Israel. And in the customs that the kings of Israel had introduced, the people of Israel secretly did things that were not right against the Lord. Their God. They built for themselves high places at all their towns. From watchtower to fortified city, they set up for themselves pillars and sacred poles on every high hill and under every green tree. There they made offerings on all the high places, as the nations did, whom the Lord carried away before them. They did wicked things provoking the Lord to anger. They served idols, of which the Lord had said to them, You shall not do this. Yet the Lord warned Israel and Judah by every prophet and every seer, saying, Turn from your evil ways, and keep my commandments and my statutes in accordance with all the law that I commanded your ancestors, and that I sent to you by my servants the prophets. They would not listen, but were stubborn as their ancestors had been, who did not believe in the Lord their God. They despised his statutes and his covenant that he made with their ancestors and the warnings that he gave them. They went out for false idols and became false. They followed the nations that were around them, concerning whom the Lord had commanded them that they should not do as they did. They rejected all the commandments of the Lord their God and made for themselves cast images of two calves. They made a sacred pole and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. They made their sons and their daughters pass through fire. They used divination and augury and they sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. None was left but the tribe of Judah alone. Judah also did not keep the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the customs that Israel had introduced. The Lord rejected all the descendants of Israel, he punished them and gave them into the hand of plunderers until he had banished them from his presence. When he had torn Israel from the house of David, they made Jeroboam, son of Nebat, king. Jeroboam drove Israel from following the Lord and made them commit a great sin. The people of Israel continued in all the sins that Jeroboam committed. They did not depart from them until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he had foretold through all his servants the prophets. So Israel was exiled from their own land to Assyria until this day. God's love was revealed among us so that we might live through Jesus. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. 
Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this the love of God was revealed among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the expiation for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought also to love one another. For if we love one another, God abides in us, and God's love will be perfected in us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And we say together, God's love was revealed among us, so that we might live through Jesus. Okay, our second Bible reading is taken from the book of Acts, Acts 28, reading verse 17, right to the end. Three days after we had come to Rome, Paul called together the local leaders of the Jews. When they had assembled, he said to them, Brothers, though I had done nothing against our people, or the customs of, of our ancestors, yet I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. When they had examined me, the Romans wanted to release me because there was no reason for the death penalty in my case. But when the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to the emperor, even though I had no charge to bring against my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have asked to see you and speak with you, since it, since it is for the sake of the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. They replied, We have received no letters from Judea about you, and none of the brothers coming here has reported or spoken anything evil about you. But we would like to hear from you what you think for that with regard to this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. After they had fixed a day to meet him, they came to him at his lodgings in great numbers. From morning till evening, he explained the matter to them, testifying to the kingdom of God and trying to convince them about Jesus, both from the law of Moses and from the prophets. Some were convinced by what he had said, while others refused to believe. So they disagreed with each other as they made leaving Paul. So they disagreed with each other as they were leaving. Paul made one further statement: "The Holy Spirit was right in saying to your ancestors through the prophet Isaiah." Go to this people and say, You will indeed listen, but never understand. And you will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes, so that they might not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. Let it be known to you then that this salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles. They will listen. He lived there for two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other, that glory may dwell in our land. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. 
And now we have the Magnificat. Let us read that. You have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call her blessed. Mary's song. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. He has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy. The promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call her blessed. Right. So now we have prayers and intercessions for others. And... We want to start by thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for this day that we have enjoyed and thanksgiving for our recent um, Macmillan Coffee Morning and Mission Day last Saturday, which was a great success. And we want to thank the Almighty for good weather, good turnout, and to spread his name abroad. We also want to thank each and every one who contributed to the day's event in some way or other. Whether it was just um, turning up, the donations, gifts, participation in any form. And so we thank God for all the help and assistance and for a successful mission day. We offer intercessions for peace, for peace in our hearts, peace with one another, and peace in the world. We especially remember Ukraine and Russia, and now the problems in Israel. We do want to hold these to God this evening for and ask for his peace to reign among the nations. We ask for prayers for individuals and those in our own congregation here and anyone else who is ailing at this time that we do not know about. So we pray for, for Doreen, we pray for Jean and Walter, we pray for Veronica and Monica and Dion. We pray for Sue and Veronica and Chester. For Veronica and Chester. And we pray for Dolly and Desmond, Jean Murphy, Joanna, who's with us again, Pat and Ray Vincent. Pauline Haywood and her mom Daphne. We pray for Muriel, David Martins, Surya Kala Johnson, Veronica, that's Veronica, and Monica and daughter. We pray for Cheryl, Charity, Pippa, Duke, Radcliffe and Pauline, and Archdeacon Elwin and his family. We pray for Mr. Gray, Andy and Anita. We pray for Una. We pray for Dorothy. 
we pray for Noel who had his operation and is back at home and Jackie Ambrose's sister-in-law and also our charity for the month Macmillan Can Cancer Support um, as, we, as I said we had our event and it was very successful we pray for Richard House Newham Youth for Christ and Faith in Schools Charity who were represented at our event please remember to donate as they are seeking funds at this time um, we have specific prayers and we will pray for the church the mission the church god of mission who alone brings growth to your church send your holy spirit to give vision to our planning wisdom to our actions and power to our witness help our church to grow in numbers in spiritual commitment to you and in service to our local community through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And this month is Black History Month, so we want to pray that um, racial prejudice will be done away with. And we ask for grace to pray for the different cultures, languages, and races which enrich our humanity and we pray for the world god of nations whose kingdom rules over all have mercy on our broken and divided world establish peace in the hearts of men and women everywhere and banish from them the spirit that makes for war and conflict that all races peoples and nations may live in peace as members of one human family and in obedience to your laws. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now we have the collect for today. O oh God, for as much as without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
and the final blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and lift up his countenance upon you and give, him, give you his love, his peace, and his joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, everyone.